Can you describe um, a Hogan practice session here at Champions? What, what did he do? What time did he get here? What, what kind of things? What did you observe Hogan do here? Well, you, you'd observe Hogan by the way he dressed. That's the first thing. He would come out immaculately dressed to do anything with custom-made slacks, custom-made shoes, custom-made shirts, every, a hat, everything that, that Ben had anything to do with. His clubs were immaculate and extremely well designed, well thought out with the shafts. Equipment was important to him, and he would start that way. Then he'd go to, out to the practice area, and he wouldn't go out there if he, didn't, if he didn't have a golf thought that he was working on. He wouldn't even practice. He might not get a golf thought, uh, one that he wanted to work on, for a month. But he's just not going to go out and beat balls. Sometimes he would beat balls and then sit down on the bag because he couldn't find anything. Uh, I never will forget one time in Phoenix, because uh, I used to watch him practice a lot in Phoenix. Uh, it was a cold day in Phoenix, and he had shot a 65. And I shot a 69, which I thought was a great score, and I was headed back to the hotel, and I saw a guy on the end of the driving range, and I knew that was Hogan down there, and I, and I thought to myself, why are you going to the motel, and this man shot 65, he's still down there practicing. So I, I wouldn't get in my car, I went right back down there, and I sat on his bag and listened and talked to him, and he was working on an idea that he was going to let these two fingers be light on the club in his grip so that he could get the club back better. He felt like, because it was cold, you, you, could, you were getting it back too short. So he changed that. And the next day, he shot a score. So I don't know what, remember what he shot, but I said, how long did those light two fingers last? Because he would change in a second. He said, those light two fingers never got to the first tee. <laughs> they didn't make it from the motel. <laughs> they did not. Sometimes you can get something on the driving range, but you can't get it 200 yards over to the first tee. Middlecoff used to say, I get great ideas in Memphis, but I can't get them on Delta. <laughs> Now, so you're saying that Hogan would, would constantly experiment, work on things? Constant. He said that golf is a game of changes and adjustments with a stick and ball. That was always what he said. He said, you don't understand golf. He used to tell me, he said, you don't understand golf. Golf's a game of changes with a stick and ball. Business is a game of changes with whatever they do, you know, new products or whatever they do. But in golf, you've got to realize it's a high-maintenance game. It's always you have to upgrade golf. You have to make your stance better, your posture better, your grip better, your, your position of the club better. Uh, you can't reach for the game. All of those things have to be uh, taken care of. And, and people that play golf, amateur players who play golf and try to run businesses will forget that. And then they will have to come to some guy that reminds them. And the pro reminds them of these fundamentals. And the guy said, well, you're not telling me anything new. You told me that last week. I said, that's right. I did. I tell, told you that last week. How to fix the flat tire. You, know, you, you're, you have a flat tire. So you upgrade this guy.